things happen in our lives, generally we react to these things in a specific way. A lot of the times this way, the way we react to things that happen to us is connected to our upbringing. It's connected to the programming of the hard drive that we have, the brain. So as something happens, we react based on how we were taught to react. Now for your information, the best of creation, the most noble of all messengers, we believe very firmly is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no doubt. We believe that the greatest gift that Allah has bestowed upon us is something known as Iman. Iman meaning, I believe in Allah, I believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I utter the shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger. And that means I will follow the system and the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are so many occasions in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where things have happened and he reacted in a way that we would not react if we were faced with the same. Why? Sometimes because we lack that education, we don't know. Sometimes because we know, but we claim that we're not prophets. Which is actually something weak. The reason is, yes, we are not prophets, but we cannot use that statement to justify the distance between us and the method of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to make sure that we are as close as possible. And sometimes we know it. We are educated. We understand the Prophet ﷺ's reactions. We know we should be reacting in a similar way, but we're not bothered. We're too lazy. Or we just feel like it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. I don't care. And that's the attitude we develop. Now, if you look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us clearly about certain reactions. How to react under certain circumstances. For example, and there are many verses in the Quran. Allah says, Allah is praising the one whom when calamity strikes, the first thing he does is he says or she says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Relating not only everything to Allah, but his or her existence as well. And that of every one of us. When calamity strikes, musiba, musiba means a problem, something that got to you that was negative. It happened to you, but it was not a positive thing. The reaction, the first reaction of a true believer is, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We indeed belong to Allah, all of us, and we indeed shall all be returning to Allah. Allah is not only the most powerful, but we belong to Him such that even if I were to come to a total end, I'm actually going back to Allah. Because that end is only connected to this worldly life, not to eternity. Can we ever, as mu'mineen, come to an end? Only in this world we can, but it is not connected to this world alone for a believer. The true life is actually the life after death. Reason is on earth, we will only be living for 70 years on average. After that, you have to go. Where do you go? Back to Allah. Whether you had big problems or small problems, you still have to go back to Allah. And the fact that you went back to Allah, unfortunately, people who remain will consider that a problem. Subhanallah. They will consider it a big problem. Yet you might be floating in Jannah. May Allah make it easy for all of us to achieve that. You might be in a far more beautiful place, but your children are crying. Your wife, I hope she is crying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. <laughs> May Allah bless every one of us. I hope the relationships are strong. We have to work on it. We have to work on it, my brothers and sisters, such that when we die, people miss us. It's a good sign. They remember us for good things. 
You know, when people remember you for a good thing, Allah says, وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِلْيَاسِينَ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ مَا فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ مُوسَىٰ وَهَارُونَ Allah speaks about the peace upon the messengers of Allah. And Allah says, we left after them a very, very good reputation and remembering on the tongues of those who were to come, including us. Today when we say Ibrahim, what do we say? Do you just say Ibrahim? If I say Ibrahim came or Ibrahim did this, I would not be referring to the Prophet of Allah, but rather one Ibrahim from amongst us. If I'm referring to the Prophet, it is an insult to say his name without saying alayhi salam, may peace be on him. The same way, the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if I'm referring to the messenger, there is actually a curse upon the one who intentionally skips out sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Did you know that? If someone intentionally skips out sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there is a curse on that person. <coughs> so my brothers and sisters, it's extremely interesting for us to lead a life such that when we go, we also have a little bit of that gift. It will not be anywhere close to that of the messengers or even the sahaba radiallahu anhum. When you say the name of any companion, you must add radiallahu anhum. No matter what happened between them, we have to say radiallahu anhum. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhum. Umar radiallahu an, Uthman radiallahu an. Why? That's a gift from Allah. Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah has become totally pleased with those who pledged allegiance with you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or to you under the tree. From amongst them were all these huge names, subhanallah. Starting with Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Umar radiallahu an, Uthman radiallahu an, Ali radiallahu an. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. So we will never reach that rank. But at least if you led a good life, if you were connected to Allah and polite to the rest of the people, Allah will give you a good mention in those to come after you. Remember those two things. You need taqwa Allahi and you need husnul khuluqi. You need to be conscious of Allah. Develop your relation with Allah and then be polite to the rest of the people. What is stopping you from being polite? Even if a person is ugly, we're speaking today about the reaction. The reaction of what? Things that happen to us. Someone swears you. What's the reaction? Go back to the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Did he swear them back? No, never. He was not vulgar. The hadith says, the Prophet ﷺ was not vulgar. He was not abusive. He was not hurtful with the words he used. But what do we do? We're hurtful with the words we use. Not to those who hurt us, but to people who are innocent, who don't even deserve it, to our own family members, our children, our brothers and sisters, our parents at times, we use hurtful words, abusive words. Why? Not even as a reaction, but as an action to begin with. May Allah forgive us. May Allah guide us. May Allah strengthen us. My brothers, my sisters, I plead with you to become more conscious of the way you use your tongue. Wallahi, it will solve a lot of your problems. When you die, people will remember you for the good words you used to utter.